happy Mother's Day. Uh, hope that yes, hope that everybody in here told their mama that. And uh, I sure did that before I left the house this morning. I'm about to forget. Uh, I got about her a nice little note today in between services. Uh, anyway, start out with a with a story, and, and the question I want to ask today is is who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? And uh, my dad, and I, I hope he, maybe he'll get to come tonight so I can see my mom on Mother's Day. But they're supposed to come tonight so you'll meet him. But my dad is a a, a, a forty was a fifty year old kid. Uh, he, I mean, he he's a, he's a stinker, and he, and he likes to mess around and, and make jokes. And one of the things he's always done is he's he's gave himself nicknames. And one of his favorite nicknames that he gave himself was the greatest. And so I had a little cousin, um, a little older than me, and when she first got around on where she could understand stuff, he would tell her who is the greatest, and she, she called him Unky, and she would say, Unky is the greatest. So they would go around all the time, who is the greatest? Unky is the greatest. Who is the greatest? Unky is the greatest. But well, one Sunday morning, some of you guys might know Chad Brannon's an old BMA pastor, but anyway, he was at our, our church in Bethlehem, and he uh, was in some children's church, and he, had, he was telling the kids, Jesus is the greatest, Jesus is the greatest, God is the greatest, and my little cousin raised her hand and said, uh-uh, Brother Chad, Unky told me he was the greatest. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, not, not good. But anyway, my, my cousin's older now, she understands that that's not the case, that, that God is the greatest. Uh, but again, I have to start, stay that story to start with the, the question of who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? We're going to be in Matthew 18, Matthew 18, 1 through 4. And who is the greatest? Who doesn't want to be great? Who doesn't want to make their life count? Who doesn't want to live for something more than themselves? And then a less serious question, but at the same time serious. Who doesn't enjoy being a kid? Who doesn't like being young? Who is the greatest? Matthew 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling a child to him, he put him in the midst of them. And he said, Truly, I say to you, unless you become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Who is the greatest? Verse 1, at this time the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The disciples, just like Jesus Christ, they were 100% man. They wanted to be great. It, it bugged the mess out of them that they wanted to know who the best was. Okay, We see that uh, in all men. Um, you know, you just, just hang around with the guys for a while. They, well, they want to make everything a competition, right? Who's the strongest? Who's the fastest? Who can shoot the best? Who killed the biggest deer? Right? Who sounds the most like a turkey? You know, yeah, guys, every, everything, everything, everything is a competition. Uh, you, I mean, me, and my, me and my brother, I mean, it was, it was always, you know, just something. You had, you had to have a winner and a loser, or it was boring. You know, you couldn't just play to play. You know, you played Cowboys with Indians. The Cowboys won, the Indians won. You played, you played war. Somebody won the war, right? There was always a winner. Men are competitive. So the disciples, again, they're 100% man. They wanted to compete. They wanted to know who was the best. They asked Jesus, who, who, is, who is the best? They did this multiple times uh, in the scripture. Uh, we see one time where, where James and John, they come to Jesus, and they say, hey, you know, and their mom came, and they said, we, we, want, to, we want to sit at your right and left hand on the throne. We want, we, we, want, we want to be the top dogs, the best. So then when the other disciples hear that James and John are asking for this, what do they do? They get mad. Well, who, what do you, who do you think you are? Why do you get to be the ones that sit at God, Jesus' right and left hand? We want to be those guys. We want to be the best. Luke 22, 24, this is right after the, the Lord's Supper. You don't have to turn there. But right after the Lord's Supper, Jesus tells the disciples, one of you will betray me. Right? He tells them, and so we know he's talking about Judas. Well, the disciples had no idea who was going to betray Jesus. They didn't know. So they discussed, it said, the scripture says, they discussed among themselves who it is that's the worst. Well, then you know what they do? After they come to the conclusion of who they think it would be that betrays Jesus, then they go into the conversation of, well, who's the greatest? So as soon as they talk about who's going to be the one that betray Jesus, then they go into, well, who of us is the best? And in Luke 24, they say that. So this is only hours before Jesus is about to be crucified, and this is what the disciples are worried about. They want to know, well, who's the best? And it says, this, this dispute among them as to which of them would be regarded as the greatest. So in the last moments of Jesus' life, the Savior of the world and the disciples are worried about who the greatest is. 
This was an issue to them, okay? They, they, were, they, were, they were consumed with it. They were men, all right? They were just like us. They were men. So again, I ask you, who is the greatest? Matthew 18, verse 2. Jesus, here's the question, and this is what he does to answer. And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them. So just imagine what Jesus is thinking, and I'm sure that Jesus was unbelievably, I don't know, I know he was, unbelievably patient. Because these disciples would come and they would ask him these questions all the time. And, and he, he would answer them all the time. They're still asking, asking, asking. What does Jesus do to answer this question? It says in another, in Mark, I believe it's Mark 9, 36, is the same story, different passage, different, different look at it. Mark says that he, he called a child to him, wrapped his arms around him, and then begin to teach them. So just imagine this as we ask the question again, who is the greatest? I want you to imagine Jesus Christ in the midst of his disciples. And I, I don't know, I, I know when I was little, my mom told me, you know, don't talk to strangers. But Jesus called some random kid in here. said, hey, come here, come here, buddy. And he calls the kid to him, and he takes it in the arms, and he wraps his arms around him, and he begins to teach the disciples. So imagine that. Imagine Jesus teaching the disciples in this humble state of, of wrapping his arms around a child, and he begins to answer the question, who is the greatest? 18 verse 3 says, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, don't forget. Don't forget what Jesus looks like right here. He's, he's, he's got this young child wrapped in his arms, and he tells him this. Unless you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you think the disciples were listening? Man, if Jesus told me, unless you dot, 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 you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, I want to know what he said in the middle. Who doesn't want to enter the kingdom of heaven? Who doesn't want to have eternal life? So when Jesus tells me, unless I do something, man, I, I'm listening. The disciples were listening. So what did he tell them? Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. As he's holding the child. Turn. Other translations, instead of using the word turn, they said to convert or to repent. Okay, so, so to turn from our old way of life, to turn away from sin and turn toward God. Become like a child. Pretty simple, right? Become like a child. Humble yourself. Become dependent on God. John 14, 6, talking about turning. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The way. Turn to the way. Turn away from the way of sin and toward the way of life. Turn toward Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 and 10, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Acts 3.19, repent, turn, repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. Matthew 4.17, from that time Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was not a new command from Jesus Christ. The Bible from the beginning to the end, is about repentance. It's about turning from death, turning from sin, turning from self, and turning toward Jesus Christ. To turn. Turn toward Jesus. Unless you turn, unless you repent, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, go on to becoming like a child. I love this. I love this because Jesus knew that the disciples were not that smart. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't quite understand, so he had to have a young child come and he holds him and teaches him. He gives him a visual. Unless you turn and now you become like a child. Who is the greatest? We turn and now we become like a child. There's three things that I want to look at that, that are just logical things that, that children are. Three things. First thing, children are dependent. Children are dependent. Mothers, you guys know that. When a baby is born, a baby can do nothing for himself. A baby is completely dependent on its mother, its father, its caretakers for survival, right? It can't eat. It can't clean itself. It can't drink on its own. I mean, all these things, it has to have somebody help it do, right? It can't go to work and earn a living, okay? You don't just come out of the womb and you're ready to go, right? You're dependent. Children are dependent. So remember that. 
Number two, children are a reflection of their parents. Number one, kids are dependent. Number two, they're a reflection of their parents. I'll give you an example of this. All of you guys are, are Cardinals fans. I love the St. Louis Cardinals. Why do I love the St. Louis Cardinals? Because my dad was a St. Louis Cardinals fan. I saw somebody wearing a, a Razorback watch. Why do you think I'm a, I'm a Razorback fan? Because my parents are Razorback fans. We're a reflection of our parents. When I was three years old, I, I, it just, it's so funny now, I thought it was cool then. My dad had a, you had, anybody heard of Leonard Skinner? Okay, you guys, you guys heard of Leonard Skinner. My dad had a Leonard Skinner CD, and he would play it. And, and if any of you guys know Leonard Skinner, they, one of their CDs, they, um, the band asked, what song is it you want to hear? And then and the crowd screams out, free bird! And so my dad, when we were, I'm talking about two and three, he'd be in the truck, and he, you know, we'd be, in, I have a twin brother, and we'd be in the back seat, you know, and so we were always together. And my dad would turn around, boys, what song is it you want to hear? And what would we answer? Free bird! You know, we would fire it up, free bird, yeah, you know, we want to hear it. Well, why do we like, why do we like Leonard Skinner? Why do we know about Leonard Skinner? Because my dad knew about Leonard Skinner. My dad played Leonard Skinner. We were a reflection of our parents. Another one that I love is my dad, my family, they were dairy farmers. Anybody know anything about dairy farmers? It's, it's hard work. It's tough. It's a tough life. It's, you know, it's 365 days a year. You don't get a day off. I thought it was so cool to go to work with my dad. I was, you know, zero to five. I thought, man, I just dreamed of working, going to work with dad. Well, you know what that meant? That meant getting up at 3.30 in the morning and going to the dairy barn. And now I look back and I think, that was not fun. <laughs> that was not fun. But then that was so cool. Wow, because I'm, I'm a reflection of my dad. I wanted to wear rubber boots every day. You know why? Because my dad wore rubber boots every day. I was a reflection of my dad. I, one that, one that I'm, I'm not too proud of, too, is, is I think this is just funny, living in the South. I thought that grown men spit brown. <laughs> I thought that when I grew up, my, my saliva would be brown. You know why? Because every man in my life did tobacco. But I just, I didn't know. I mean, I just thought, I'll spit brown someday. I didn't know. I thought, I, thought, I, thought when, I thought when you bought jeans that there was a circle in the back. I just thought that's how it was, right? You know, now we buy jeans and they got holes and, and they're faded. I just thought you bought jeans and that Wrangler jeans had a pair, you know, they had a, had a, had a skull can in the back. I just thought that's, that's how it was. But seriously, we are, we are a reflection of our parents, right? We are a reflection of our parents. Kids are dependent. Kids are a reflection of their parents. And, I, and clarify there, my dad quit dipping about two years ago, so if he comes not, tell him congratulations. But um, <laughs> anyway, seriously, kids are dependent, and kids are a reflection of their parents. Number three, parents delight in their children. Parents delight in their children. There's no doubt you're all nodding your head. Yes, we do. You do. I don't care. They may be just have the, the I mean, you, parents defend their kids. They, they may do something just so completely dumb, just, you know, against the law, whatever. But, man, the mom, 90% of the time, mom's going to have their back. Parents delight in their children. Proverbs 29, 17 says, Discipline your son. He will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. Proverbs 17, 6. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged, and the glory of children is their fathers. Not only do, do parents delight in their kids, but grandparents really delight in their grandchildren, right? It is the crown of the age. Man, we love our grandbabies. We love our kids. We fill our refrigerator with their pictures. We put them on our mantle. We celebrate graduations, weddings, birthdays. Parents delight in their children. Number one, kids are dependent. They can do nothing for themselves. They, they have to have care. They have to have care. Number two, kids are a reflection of their parents, no doubt. And number three, parents delight in their children. So remember these just three basic truths that I think you all agree are, are, are true about kids. Let me go back to Matthew 18. Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? Jesus says in verse 4, Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. 
Remember this, humbleness always leads to exaltation in the Scripture. Humbleness always leads to exaltation in the Scripture. So completely backwards from what you would think the truth is. What, what the world teaches is the truth. That humbleness would lead to exaltation. This is what exact, exactly what Jesus preaches here in, uh, in, in verse 4. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Multiple examples of that scripture. Matthew 23, 11. The greatest among you shall be your servant. To be great, you have to serve. Opposites. It's not what we assume. It's the truth. To be great, you have to serve. Matthew 23, 12. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. You humble yourself, you make yourself low, you'll be exalted. If you exalt yourself, you're going to be knocked down. James 4.10 Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will exalt you. 1 Peter 5.6 saying, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? I hope you know the answer. Jesus Christ is the greatest. We're going to look at that Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. And this is, a, just, this is my favorite passage of Scripture in the Bible right now. It changes a lot. But right now, I, I, just, I just love this. I love this. Philippians 2, 5 and 8. You look in verses 3 and 4. And I, I really, honestly, when I, when I first started looking at this, it was in high school football. Because 3 and 4 talk about being selfless. Talk about putting others before yourself at all times. Their desires, their wants before you at all times. Count others. It says, count others more significant than yourself. Okay, and then we go into verse 5. And it says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So this mindset is that of which you put others before yourself. Okay, this is the mindset. So now we go into verses 5 through 8, and it shows us how Jesus Christ did this. How Jesus Christ put others before himself. How he became the greatest. How he humbled himself. Here we go. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The ultimate example of humbleness. We cannot fathom this humility that took hold, that Jesus chose to allow to take hold of himself. Verse 6 says, Who was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. I am not at all as educated as I like to be in the Bible. There's so much I don't understand. And that's why I try to preach simple truths and say what I'm sure of. And later maybe as I get older I'll be able to understand more and more. But this is what one of the verses that I don't I cannot comprehend. Okay? I don't think I'll ever be able to learn, no matter how much schooling, no matter how much studying, that Jesus was equal with God, is what this verse says in verse 6. It said he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he chose to give it up. We cannot fathom the amount of humility it takes to go from being equal with God to becoming the humblest of humble human beings. The separation there is so far beyond our imagination. But that's what this verse says. Okay, we can't understand it, but we have to hear it. Try to think about it. Try to grasp what we can't, but just, just soak in that. The humility that takes. But made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So not only did he, did he give up equality with God, as if it weren't just enough just to come to this earth, he became the lowest of the low on this earth. The lowest of the low on this earth. So not only lowering himself below the angels, not only lowering himself before, below God, but below where he belonged, he lowers himself below the sinners. Made himself a servant of the sinners, of those that have rejected him, rejected his father. Unbelievable humility. That's what makes the, the nativity scene so unbelievable. Is that not only did he just come and was born, but he came and born in the, in the humblest of humble places to the humblest of humble people in the humblest of humble circumstances. Humility. Unbelievable humility. Unfathomable humility. Awesome stuff. 
So, to finish it all off, being found in human form, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Not only is he born in the most humble circumstances, lives in perfection, and then dies the most <laughs> humble death. The worst of the worst. Jesus is all about extremes. He was extreme in humility. Unbelievable. <laughs> and so we, 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 we can't grasp it. We can't understand this humility. And who is the greatest? Jesus Christ is the greatest. Why? Because he humbled himself. So I want you to see the truth that humbleness leads to exaltation. Becoming like a child, becoming like Jesus, leads to exaltation. Look at what God placed on Jesus Christ because of his humility in verses 9 through 11 of Philippians 2. Remember, humbleness leads to exaltation. Verse 9, Therefore God has highly exalted him, this is Jesus, Therefore God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee would bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Humbleness leads to exaltation. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee would bow Every tongue confessed that Jesus is Lord. He humbled himself. He made himself nothing. Became a servant. And so what does God do? God raises him up. The name that is above every name. For eternity on Jesus Christ. The greatest name. The most humble man. The God man. The most humble being. Will have the greatest name. The most exalted, the highest exalted. Who is the greatest? Jesus Christ is the greatest. Go back to Matthew 18. Verse 3 and 4 says, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So understand that when the disciples asked Jesus, who is the greatest, he calls the young child himself, he wraps him in his arms, and he begins to teach them. He teaches them about himself. He describes himself to a T. He did humble himself like a child. He was the one to come and humble himself like a child, and then he became the greatest. Awesome stuff. So, can we be the greatest? Can we be great? No, but yes. No, because you can't. Yes, because he can and wants you to be. Jesus Christ is the greatest. Jesus Christ wants you to be a reflection of him. He wants you to become like him. So if we turn, if we become like children, we can have greatness within us, that being Jesus Christ. We can represent him in all that we do. We can live for him. We can spend eternity with him as a child of God, becoming a child. Okay? Don't forget, number one, children are dependent, become dependent on God the Father for life. Number two, reflect God. Just as we reflect our heavenly parents, we should be a reflection of God. Just like him. If, man, if he's a fan of it, I'm a fan of it. If God says it, I say it. If God commands it, I do it. And number three, understand that, that God delights in us as his children. Just as the Heavenly Father and Mother delight in their kids, God delights in us. He delights in you. Awesome truth. So who, who doesn't want to be a kid? Who doesn't want to be a kid? Who doesn't want to be great? Isn't it awesome that, that to become great, we've got to become like a child. Become dependent on God the Father. <coughs> Turn from our sins. Humble ourselves before Him. I want to pray that we would, we would see this truth, that we would embrace God's desire for us to become His child. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to, to be part of something great. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to, to be the greatest, to be the example that he is for us to, to see humility, or to, God, see just a picture of, of your love. Lord, I pray that we would all turn from our sins. Lord, that we would turn to you, run to you. God, that we would want to become like children. Lord, that we would want to, to make ourselves nothing before you, that you can build us up, that you can mold us, that you can shape us that we can be a reflection of you, Lord. Help us to reflect you or help us to, to be like you in, in, in all of our lives. 
Lord, I thank you for delighting in us. I thank you for smiling upon us when we do live for you. I pray that you would smile upon the Tony Baptist Church, that you would smile upon the people here, or that you would help them again to just, to just turn from their sins, to humble themselves before you, become like children before you, or that you would use them in a mighty way. You should I pray. Amen. I don't know.